Hey everyone, welcome to my Alhaitham guide. I know it's a bit late, but I needed some time to check his kit thoroughly so that I could do justice to him. In this video, I'm going to discuss about how to play Alhaitham, his favorite weapons, which artifact sets he loves, his synergies with other characters, and lastly, a showcase of talent level 6 Alhaitham in solo, spread, and team versus a level 10 Alhaitham in similar scenarios. A quick disclaimer here is my Alhaitham build. Thanks to keep in mind that my Alhaitham remains on attack percent goblet throughout the talent level 6 vs crown showdown as I don't have a good dendro damage goblet yet and the team members don't change either. Talent are at level 6 only in showdown segment, rest of the clips have crown Alhaitham. So without further ado, let's get started. Recently, I streamed my Alhaitham summons on my channel. Video link will be in the description box and don't fret, timestamps are available on the stream for you to check out how Gacha destroyed me and as for weapon summoning session, here it is. Here I'd like to point out the fact that I didn't pull on weapon banner since Ayato's... Ayato? Not even Ayato. Even since last Primordial Jade Cutter. So I didn't even know what my pity was and the history was definitely blank because it gets deleted every 6 months or so. So I went in completely blank. I thought that I was not on pity but apparently I may have been. I got it in my first 10 pulls and that felt really great. I I was over the moon for the fact that I won my 50-50. And yeah, the Alhaitham weapon came home and... I was a happy boy, I was a happy camper because I didn't have to spend lots of primo gems on weapon banner trying to get his signature weapon. Now definitely signature weapon makes a lot of difference to his kit because it's a great stack stick as well as a high thumb tailored made weapon so definitely a great aesthetically pleasing and functioning weapon if I may say. Let's start with his normal attacks. His normal attacks are a basic 5 hit combo. I must admit, they look really sleek and stylish. Hoyovers did a great job with those cuts. His elemental skill has two variations, tap and hold. In tap version, he teleports himself forward in the direction of enemies doing dendro damage and he generates himself two mirrors if he has none. And in hold version, he lets you aim in the direction you want your Alhaitham to unleash himself in. We'll discuss more about mirrors in the later section of the video. Multiplier scale off of elemental mastery and attack which is always a good sign. Next we have his burst. It unleashes prismatic beams of dendro in an enclosed space with a relatively small radius. And generates mirrors based on how many mirrors he consumes in his burst. Now the amount of dendro beams unleashed in the burst is corresponding to the amount of mirrors consumed. So if he consumes 0 mirrors he will generate 3 mirrors after his burst and if he consumes 3 mirrors he will not generate any mirrors after his burst. Starting at 0 mirrors only 4 beams are fired and climbs up by 2 beams with addition of a mirror going up to 10 instances of dendro damage. Here comes the main mechanism of his kit into playing, yes the chisel light mirrors. These are the small leaf like thingies that appear on his shoulders. Chisel Light Mirrors can be obtained when he uses his elemental skill from his Ascension Passive 1 when he either plunges or charge attacks enemies and from his elemental burst based on how many mirrors his burst has consumed. These mirrors perform coordinated attacks when Alhaitham uses his normal attacks. I would say that it is somewhat similar to Shingchu's Rain Swords but only Alhaitham can trigger them. Depending on how many mirrors Alhaitham has, the coordinated attacks will change patterns accordingly and are counted as elemental skill damage with independent multipliers. At maximum, he can have 3 mirrors and his damage is at top level when he has these 3 mirrors. Each mirror expires in 4 seconds, but generating a new mirror before the third one expires refreshes the entire cooldown. When he has 1 mirror, the coordinated attack will look like a slash. When he has 2 mirrors, it will look like a shuriken. And with 3 mirrors, oh boy, he would rain hellfire. One last thing which emphasizes on elemental mastery in his kit is his ascension passive 2, which increases the damage of projection attacks and his burst by 0.1% of his total elemental mastery, having a threshold of 100%. Hence, more elemental mastery is equal to more damage. 
Majority of his damage comes from coordinated mirror attacks, that is his elemental skill. We fully want to utilize the 4 seconds of uptime on these mirrors. In order to do so, there is a specific rotation that you would want to use. As discussed earlier, when you have 0 mirrors, your elemental burst will generate 3 mirrors for you within 2 seconds after your burst ends. In the meantime, you can do normal attacks till you have dendro infusion. As soon as dendro is infused to your normal attacks, the coordination attacks will start with 3 mirrors and will last for 4 seconds before degrading to 2 mirrors. Now rather than counting down seconds, we know that the coordination attack interval is 1.6 seconds and thus only 2 coordinated attacks can occur before your mirrors expire. Hence as soon as you witness 2 of those attacks, you should either use your skill or charge attack to reset your mirror timer and after another 2 coordinated attacks, you either use your skill or charge attack whichever you didn't use for the first time around. Personally, I would recommend that you use your elemental skill before your charge attack in order to get your elemental skill off cooldown as soon as your rotation ends. That way, you should have 12 seconds of uptime on his top level 3 mirrored coordinated attacks and then 4 seconds of 2 mirrored coordinated attacks and 4 seconds of 1 mirror coordinated attacks. Hence, a total of 20 seconds of dendro infusion can be obtained through this method. To summarize this combo, you need to start your rotation with your elemental burst with zero mirrors and as soon as you see two coordinated attacks, use your elemental skill. After using your elemental skill, wait for two more coordinated attacks to be unleashed and then use your charge attack. After you spam your charge attack, you see two more coordinated attacks and then it's your sign to keep spamming normal attacks basically till your mirrors expire. That way you will have maximum dendro infusion uptime and highest level of mirrors for the most of rotation. There are many good free to play options available for Al Haitham. Starting off with Elemental Mastery Swords, first of all we have Iron Stink. Now this sword has 100% uptime and it is very easy to get refinement rank 5 as you can just craft this weapon. Then we have Zephyr's Moonlight, a strong support sword for your entire party but the only downside it has that it is only obtainable from Gacha so not many players will have it. Following up we have Tokabau Shigure. Now this sword was given to us players in recent events in patch 3.3. You would have this weapon at refinement rank 5. I have not done it mine since I'm just lazy but yes, if you have this weapon at refinement rank 5, this would be his best in slot free to play option available for you. Although this would be very irrelevant if you are a player who has joined a game in patch 3.4 so yeah, we can't do anything about it can we? Haha. <laughs> then we have a premium option that would be a 5 star sword, Freedom Zone. Now this sword is overall a great support weapon for your entire team as well as great DPS increase for Al Haitham because it has a high base attack and a bit more elemental mastery than 4 star swords. An honorable mention would be Harbinger of Dawn as this sword has sheer crit stats built into it the only downside it has is that it requires 90% HP margin if you can maintain it. This sword is as broken as any 5 star DPS sword. Talking about 5 star swords, let's shed some light on 5 star DPS swords with best in slot being the Light of Foliar Incision. This is Al Haitham's tailor made weapon. I don't need to say much about it, it is tailor made for him. He will do great damage if you have it because it's basically going to amplify the normal attack and yeah. Uh, everything that is stated over here, I don't need to, you can just pause the video and read it, but basically it increases the damage based on the character's elemental mastery. So, Telemate for Allah Haitham, best in slot for him, broken is the word that we need to talk about over here. Next up, we have a close runner of being Primordial Jade Cutter. Just because of his sheer crit stats and its very convenient HP to attack conversion, this sword sweats comfortably at near to best in slot weapon and won't be a bad pull if you have it. You can also use Haran Gapaku Futsu as Al Haitham does normal attacks as well. And if you're using Shimanawa or Echoes of an Offering set on Al Haitham, this shot can amplify your spread damage even further. 
Miss Flitter Refuge is also a viable alternative to use if in possession. May not suit Alhaitham aesthetically but works really well with his kit. You would generally want to build him on Elemental Mastery PS stats. That means you would require an Elemental Mastery Sands, a Dendro Damage Goblet, and Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circlet. Now, if you don't happen to have an on piece Dendro Damage Goblet, then Attack Percent Goblet can also be used, but it isn't optimal. Although I use it in this showcase, I know I don't have it, I just had to use something, so I just use this because it has. Great crit stats. Now, his burst costs 70 energy, and henceforth, you'd at least want over 125% energy recharge to maintain his burst uptime. And if you're using this, is only if you're using a double dendro team where your another character, your off field dendro character, is applying good energy applications so that he can gain those energy particles. His energy requirements varies if he is a solo dendrot character in your party that would take his energy requirements up to 170% energy recharge. Now that's a lot of energy recharge to stack so I would recommend that uh, you watch the teammate section of this video for more information on how to tackle that situation. With this information in mind, we have a few sets that would work on a Lytham. Starting with 4-piece Gilded Dreams, 4-piece Gilded Dreams as it's his best in slot artifact set. Now this set is going to provide you with elemental mastery and attack percent buffs based on your party's elements. Although requires another team member equipped with deep wood memories to shred dendro resistance of opponents. Next up, we can easily use the deep wood memories on a Lhaitham. If you don't happen to have any other Dendro character or a character that could utilize this set in your party. If you have that kind of character, you should prioritize giving Deep Food to them and Gilded Dreams to Alhaitham. Next we have two piece mixture of Elemental Mastery and High Answers like Paradise Lost, Gilded Dreams as well as Wanderer's Troop. This combination would give you 160 elemental mastery roughly and it's easy to optimize your substats, your crit stats and your energy and elemental mastery requirements if you are going off pieces on all these enhancing artifacts. Now an interesting option would be Echoes of an Offering as well as Shimanawa's Reminiscence. Why you ask? Well, these artifact sets are focused on enhancing normal attack damage. It's not recommended to use them over Gilded or Deepwood, but can be usable option when paired with niche support like Yunjin, Toma, or Ayato. Finally, another interesting option I'd say is Emblem of Severed Fate. It's very self-explanatory, like if you want him to do damage in his burst and then quick swap from him, Emblem of Severed Fate can do the damage and maintain his energy need. So. Yeah, I mean, it's not a recommended set for him, but if you want to do damage with his burst and have burst up time, I guess you can use this as well. I've tested it, it's not bad, it's quite good. Although he is a main DPS character, he should be on on field all the time, so I would I would not give him an emblem of separate fate, but you can. It's it's not a bad choice. Alhaitham being a Dendro driver opens a lot of team slots in which he can fit in, like Quick Bloom teams, made to do Quicken as well as Hyper Blooms, currently my favorite Alhaitham team because it's just broken Nahida and Alhaitham when paired with a Hydro and Electro support. Yeah, this team comp is very broken, I really enjoy playing this, it's one very one of the very fun play styles I would say. Next up we have Burgeon type, now type we only have Toma sadly as the Burgeon driver because anyone except Toma is not as good as Pyro Applicator for Burgeon team comps, not for Melt or Vaporize but specifically to explode those blooms 
Toma is really consistent and one of the best in slot pyro supports for Burgeon. But uh, yeah, it's a solid team comp if you want to play. Then we have Hyper Carry Quicken team in which you pair a Hytham with another Dendro that is double Dendro team and an Electro support. Um, this team slot will have a flexible slot. The fourth one is going to be a flexible slot in which you can add a character which is a healer or shielder or just a mixture of both. Then uh, um, lastly this is really experimental. I would not recommend using this team but Raiden Shogun, Ayato, Yunjin and Alhaitham. These four characters when Alhaitham is using Shimano's Reminiscence or Echoes of an Offering he can do damage. He can trigger Hyper Blooms for Raiden that is Elemental Mastery Raiden not Energy Recharge Raiden. Elemental Mastery Raiden will, care, will take care of the Hyper Blooms as well as apply enough Electro application for Alhaitham to do Quicken Aura. And Yunjin and Ayato are there just to boost his damage, normal attack damage if I may say. His favorite Dendro supports will have to be Nahida and Dendro Traveler as of patch 3.4 as they both enhance Alhaitham's elemental mastery via their burst and can be equipped with Deep Wood Set for Dendro Shred while also giving him enough particles to keep his burst off cooldown. A bonus point about both of them is that they both are great damage dealers as well. Now, if you want someone who can heal your team, you can select Yao Yao. She is great healer in terms of dendro applications she is great as well and her particle generation is also good you can equip her with favonius weapon series favonius lance i think and she will also take care of your energy needs now if you want just energy recharge you can go for elegy of the end kole or just favonius warbo kole for particle generation favonius warbo and sacrificial bow these two weapons will give you enough energy to keep your Alhaitham burst 100% off cooldown. And hence, these characters, these Dendro characters are great supports for Alhaitham depending on what your niche is and how you want to play your Alhaitham. Now, Tignari exists, I know. He is not a support though, he is a damage dealer and I don't want to treat him like a support character. Although he he has dendro application he can be a particle generator but nothing more than that he can be a sub dps a quick swap dps i guess but i would not recommend using a slot for ignari in alhaitham team for particles or just sub dps so yeah these are the dendro supports that you can use with alhaitham for maximum efficiency oh oh well yeah maximum efficiency As for Electro supports, Elemental Mastery Raiden Shogun would be the best pick due to her 100% Electro application and Bloom reaction. Now free to play alternatives would be Kuki Shinobu and Lisa equipped with Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer. Kuki brings healing to the table while providing ample Electro application and Lisa shreds enemies defenses from her kit, making them great free to play options for Alhaitham's support role. Now, Beiru and Fischl can also work well with Alhaitham, although maintaining their uptime is already a job to do, that you are better off using previously mentioned supports for Alhaitham unless, unless you require more electro damage, in which case Fischl and Beiru can outperform all three together, that is Raiden Shugun, Lisa and Kuki Shinobi. Uh, please ignore the background characters over there. They don't, mm, no, we don't talk about them. <laughs> okay, so those were the Electro and Dendro supports for Alhaitham. These guys would carry your Alhaitham in terms of the Hyper Bloom reaction, Quicken reaction. And yeah, they would do their job really well. As long as you build them correctly, that is. <laughs> Let's triple crown my Alhaitham. Yeah. 
really good multipliers at level 10 I must say. The only thing that I don't like is that his normal attacks don't scale off of elemental mastery. A quick disclaimer, I am only going to speak when necessary, other than that I am going to shut my mouth. Enjoy! Tenant level 6 of the would have killed this plant only if I had not wasted a few seconds doing Mona's charge attack, but oh well. Once again, at talent level 6, I was still learning his playstyle and hence I died, but he could have easily handled muscle on his own. This was a skill issue. so little difference at talent level 6 and 10 in terms of dps that it's not even funny damn here's some bonus footage of me clearing floor 12 chamber 1 2 3 first half with my all item team i hope you enjoyed this video like and comments would be appreciated a lot and if you like my content please do consider subscribing and I shall see you guys next time around. See ya. And yes, please do enjoy this showcase of mine like little. I don't usually do floor 12. This was me attempting floor 12. The golden wolf lot just sucked. But yeah, this is just a Lhaitham first half thing. So it, it's fine, I guess. Anyways, I, I'm gonna go now. Bye.